Hello, it's John Liu, Flow Ninja. Today I have a new hack, and this is about format currency. Let's start by running this and just show you how it works. So we're gonna start this trigger. It's a menu trigger, and I'm actually asking for a number. Let's just put in say 134.56. The flow is a very quick one. It runs in uh, all the actions are about zero seconds, and it comes out with the format formatting done. Okay, and um, a bit about some of these steps, uh, we'll, we'll go into them a bit later, but let me just quickly explain the simplest ones. The whole number splits this initial number, which is this decimal, uh, basically to the part in front of the decimal point, and the decimal splits it, take the, the point afterwards. Okay, so the whole number and the decimal, we kind of split that number into two parts. Uh, at the end, we'll join that decimal back. And most of these two steps deals with how do we insert the comma in the right place. And let's have a look at this uh, this flow. The whole whole number starts off here. Now, this may have some issues. So let's just show you the code. Split. Let's copy that out. I might put that into this comment here. And then that one I'll put into here in the comment, and I'll actually make that one. So the expression basically is this. Uh, this is how we understand this expression. I want to split the number, which is the trigger body number. That's something from the top here. Or it could be whichever variable it came from. We want to split that by this period. Okay, but this is a number and split can only work on string. So we need to put string around this, right? And then furthermore, if the number is a whole number, then this split will not, there will be no part two. There will just be that initial number. So we will say question mark. So this is optional, but we'll take the, sorry, we'll take the first element of it. And then similarly, the second element refers to everything after the decimal point. And this obvious, this is uh, optional. So it's quite possible that this may not exist. In this case, this will remain empty. Okay. So we have these two expressions forming the top two. And I added some comments. So let me just put that, save that as well. Now, then I'm actually doing this fancy, fancy thing. Um, in here, I'm performing a uh, range. Um, today, none of the expressions are coming up. So I am performing a wrench here. That basically, uh, let me just take this whole thing out because uh, we're going to look at several of them. Okay. So we've already gone to those two expressions. Then the third one I want to show is, um, firstly, we want this wrench. And the range basically says that uh, range creates an array of a number from the zero, zero index uh, to the length of our whole number. So this is the whole number. We're just caring about the whole number in the front. So from the for the whole length of the number of characters, which is this part, uh, we're going to get a range. So this basically creates, in my example, which I think was four digits. Uh, I forgot already. Uh, but basically, if it's four digit number, it will basically create something like this. Okay, that's what range does. And then uh, we select a few, we kind of expand, uh, project a few values from this number array. First, we just get index i, which is the item going through the for each. So this will just be index. Secondly, we're doing a substring. We're basically doing substring over the whole number string, and we're going to take one character at each of the index. So this basically, so say example, if our if our number is um, say two, uh, say two hundred thirty four, then uh, the array becomes two, three, four, like so. Okay. Well, for each of the C. Now. The i is what I consider reverse index. 
because we actually need to count the index from the right hand side. Want to know that's the first, the first digit, that's the second digit, that's the third digit. Because uh, numbers we start counting from the, the smallest value going all the way up. And we want to insert the comma after the third digit. So we need to be able to count the index from the back, well, from the, from the uh, right hand side. So we need a reverse, and that's basically a subtraction from the total length uh, of this index. So we will start, basically we want to end up with something like before, three, two, one, something like this. Okay? And then uh, we want to use mod to basically calculate that uh, for each of the three digits, uh, divide this number by, where is it? I'm missing a little bit, yes. Dividing the number by three, uh, we want to know the value. So this will be the remainder, which will basically give us something like, uh, that will be one, that will be zero, that will be two, that will be one. Right, so it's the remainder when we divide this number by three, we'll get this. So that's the mod. Okay, so we end up with these four values. Um, if I quickly, uh, let's let's just quickly run that again, and then we'll see some of that value and what that looked like. So see the digits here. So um, the value that we're running with is one, two, three, four, and here you will see the characters is one, two, three, and four, and you see the reverse index, and more importantly the the mod, the remainder value. See the third digit, the mod is zero. Okay, so every three digits we have, uh, this is the third digit, so the mod is zero. So that's important, and we'll, we'll, I'll show you why next. The next part is we are now collapsing this array of, a uh, projected array of all these little information for each of the digits. We're gonna put that back into uh, a, a, a string array. And the way we do this is we basically say, um, let me take this. So we're gonna take just the output directly from there. But we have this fancy if expression. And I will scroll down here. I have this fancy expression. Basically we say, ignore this part. Uh, if the mod is equal to zero so that means every third digit we're going to in, we're going to take our character but add a space in front of it right so where where we expect um to have say this number two we add a space in front and then otherwise we'll just take the number by itself so the character by itself so if the value was say five six seven a uh, this will turn into five six seven eight and then uh, in this particular step that will turn into this okay with me so we basically create this that's what that does and then oops let me collapse that and finally in the compose result i do basically a join here let me take that pick this code sorry this gets super hard to read um, it is possible to have multiple expressions in a compose, and I'll show you what that syntax becomes. The syntax kind of looks like this. Okay, so basically, when you add additional expressions into a compose, compose wraps it in this little curly bracket. The add curly bracket becomes what it what it is. So that's just a static string. That dollar sign is just static. This is code. Code uh, this bracket to here. That's code. And then there's another bit of code to another. So there are two expressions here, this one, which we'll pull out and have a look. And then we have another one, this one. Okay, we'll come to that one in a minute. So the very first one basically is, I have this array, which is something like this. And I want to basically first uh, join everything together. I want to join this whole array together. That will basically make it into five, six, seven, eight, like this. I then want to uh, trim it because it's possible, say, if my value was, say, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
then it will actually become space 567 space 890 kind of like this so i want to get rid of that preceding space so that's why i'm trimming and then i'm going to split this resource string by space and then rejoin it into using comma so that will basically split this into 567 a9 10 so i'll basically our digit groups and then rejoin them together into 567 comma a9 10. okay so that's how we can do the uh the formatting and it doesn't really matter how many digits you have you could type as many as you want uh, but basically that's how that will work and then the next part this part is purely to deal with the decimal so we on the at the very beginning we sorted out the decimal parts of the digits i'm adding a few more zeros to it just in case it's blank and then i'm using substring to basically say start from the first character i want to take just two characters so if you have a number that say 1.1 .1, it will display uh dollar sign 1.10 just always ensuring we have two decimals that's just what that expression does Okay, so this whole thing together, you see that's a fixed value. There's a fixed period in the middle, and then it's separated by these two expressions. That one does decimals, and this one does the join of this uh, digit. So basically, again, using the range to project strings into individual characters, uh, each of this is a little bit of meta information regarding how this, what we need from this. And then from this set of array, we merge it back into this form. Now this really only needs to know where the, what the remainder value is for each item and what the character is. So this does not actually need the R or the I. Those are mainly for me to explain this example. Like in, in a proper form of this, we don't actually need to calculate the I or the R. We just need to know um, the, the, the character and we need to know the, um, what do you call it, the, the remainder. And in fact, because of this, these two expressions can actually be merged into this. It is possible for these two arrays, these two selects, to be done within one select. Uh, but then the expression becomes quite hard to read. So I'll leave that as an exercise for you to try. Uh, but you should get this one working, and then you'll see this. Now, I put the whole result back inside a scope, and that just means that once I build this, it's very easy for me to copy it. And then in the future, add it to additional uh, templates that I might use this. So let's try it one more time. And this time we'll use a super large number. Um, oh, should we? Yeah, let's try it one more time. We're going to do, uh, let's not do, oh, I always start with one. Let's start with A9. Uh, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2.1. So deliberately one digit. I'm going to run that. And you see it's very quick. And you see the commas are insert, inserted at the thousand mark. Now, if you're in a different culture using a different uh, character symbol, uh, you can switch that out as appropriate. Uh, some cultures don't have the separator at the thousand mark, so you may tweak that using where you where we do the mod. Instead of dividing by three, you might divide by two or divide by four. Okay, that is for my currency. Um, hope you like this little quick demo. Uh, subscribe and like my channel. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.